Uh, fatty belly glands have the three major glands, including private, submandibular, and sublingual glands. In addition, there are hundreds of small aggregations of minor fatty belly glands scattered throughout the oral cavity, pharynx, sinus, nasal cavity, larynx, as well as parapharyngeal space. Um, in terms of statistics and epidemiology, you have to remember 80, 80, 80. So 80% of study by gland tumors are product gland tumors. 80% of product gland tumors are benign. And 80% of benign product gland tumors are benign mixed tumors. So this is something easy to remember. And the size of the gland has an inverse relationship with the malignancy rate. So 80% of product, which is the biggest of study by glands, is benign, but the 50% of submandibular gland, which is second largest uh, side by gland, has a benign region. But only 15 to 20% of the sublingual gland, which is smallest the size of the side by gland, are benign, meaning more malignant region in a smaller gland. So to understand the anatomy of a product gland, I think it's important to recognize the surrounding anatomy structure of the product space with respect to other spaces in a suprahyoid neck. The suprahyoid neck contains very large, sort of lots of small spaces. And the product space is living in kind of behind a mandible, posterior to the masticator space. And immediately medial to that, there'll be a pretty styloid or parapharyngeal space. The further medial and slightly posterior would be crowded space. In the pharyngeal mucosal space, there would be a lot of squamous diphtherium or the squamous cell called snowman variety. And retropharyngeal space and a pre-vertebral space. So it's important to recognize the product space with respect to the other spaces in the uh, head and neck. Now, in a coronal view, notice the body space, which is in the green, is abutting on the lateral surface of the condyle of the mandible, and also very closely, intimately associated with the masticator space. Masticator space is the largest of spaces in the suprahyoid neck and extends above the zygomatic arch, which is called suprazygomatic masticator space. Notice that when you talk about uh, submandibular gland and also sublingual gland, which is located in a submandibular space and also sublingual space. Those are below the tail of the product or angle of the mandible. Sublingual space is more uh, higher than the myohyoid spleen, and a submandibular space is below this myohyoid spleen. So those are not very important anatomical structures. Now, the product space, there's a couple of key facts that you should know. The superficial and uh, layer of deep cervical fascia, as uh, is outlined by these yellows, is surrounding the product space. And product space contains, of course, product glands, facial nerves, and also product lymph nodes. There are multiple small lymph nodes in the product glands. Retromandibular vein and also branch of external product artery. And facial nerve runs through the product gland and then that divides a superficial lobe versus the deep lobe. It's not a distinct lobe per se, but it depends on the relationship to the facial nerve. Anything superficial to the facial nerve is called a superficial lobe, and then deep to that would be a deep lobe. And also, the product gland is kind of elongated all the way to the angle of the mandible. So the lower portion of the gland is called the tail of the product that I'll show you. Again, important to keep in mind that this is the style the from it, where the facial nerve is exiting and then in, uh, the, uh, the running through the product gland command. And retromandibular vein is immediately posterior to the mandible, and a uh, branch of the external cryo artery is just the medial to the retromandibular vein. These are very important anatomical kind of structures. Now, in the sagittal view, it's important to know that product gland is immediately underneath the skull base, the external cryo artery, external auditory canal. 
Um, and it also the, the cranial nerve seven really uh, potential source of cranial tumor spread. Because of the lymph nodes, this including a part gland, they sometimes have a neural metastasis to the intra parotid lymph node, looks like parotid primary parotid gland tumor. And location of a tumor determines superficial projection versus total projection, meaning if the tumor is a deep to the facial nerve, there's no way to save the superficial loss of the surgeon will decide to take the entire parotid gland out. As a to tumor is superficial to the facial nerve, just like in this diagram, they may be able to take a superficial product actually. And the tail of the product lesion, which I alluded to, the angle of the mandible, uh, would be presented at the angle of mandible angle, which almost doesn't look like a product one lesion, but I think it is in that product one now. Again, important anatomical structure, including flow of external auditory canal, the mastoidal tip, styloid mastoidal foramen. Again, the mastoidal tip and then styloid process. So in between, there's a styloid mastoidal foramen where the facial nerve is exiting. And a posterior to the masticator space and then lateral to the crater space. So those are important anatomical structures. Now, parapharyngeal space is actually more continuation of the uh, deep lobe of the bladder. And then typically, you can see as a fat space in the pharyngeal space, in the, next to the pharyngeal space. And this is kind of surrounded by the many, many spaces, like lateral, posterior to the pharyngeal mucosal space, lateral, medial, posterior to the masticator space, anterior to the crater space. And this actually does not have a whole lot of structure, including but it, uh, the content of parapharyngeal space include a fat, minor salivary gland, and also small nerve and vessel, uh, and lymph nodes. So open majority of parapharyngeal space mass uh, is including a salivary gland tumor, which is similar to the parapharyngeal space mass region. Okay. Let me show you a few some of the anatomical uh, uh, importance. For example, this patient does not have a normal particle tissue like a left side, but in, uh, instead, the patient has a very prominent accessory particle. So this accessory particle is basically additional side of a cerebral gland along the product back. And then you'll be able to see those in some patients who had a prominent accessory, uh, accessory particle. This is an example of a hypertrophic or reactive superficial part intraplatic lymph node. The reason that protagon has a lymph node is that protagon is developed much earlier in a gestational age. So it incorporates the inifoidal tissue inside a gland as compared to submandibular gland, which develops much later uh, after the lymphatic tissues develop. So the submandibular lymph nodes are outside of the gland, as opposed to intraparotid lymph nodes is inside the gland. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, so they, let me show you a couple of examples. So this is a, a kind of very classic appearance of a parapharyngeal space deep lobe mass by extending to the, um, the parapharyngeal space. Notice this Parapharyngeal fat is displaced medially, and also styloid tunnel is enlarged. So you know that the region is arising from deep growth of the product and it's pushing parapharyngeal space more medially. And this is the case of a parapharyngeal space benign mixed tumor. Another parapharyngeal space benign mixed tumor is well circumscribed region in a superficial lobe of the product, more lateral to the mandibular condyle. And this is again a case of a benign mixed tumor. Another case of benign mixed tumor, a little bit more deeper to the deep bulbic product. Notice a little lobulation or nodular component. This is a very classic appearance of a benign mixed tumor, lobulation or oscillation. And the important things to keep in mind is this is much deeper than the facial nerve, so that you know the mass of the tip, and this is probably the facial nerve arising. So the deep to the facial nerve, so this will be a deep of the product on the DMT. 
Notice the patient also had that two other nodules in the contralateral side, side. so oftentimes the benign mixed tumor has a multiple uh, lesion in bilateral. Another multiple lesion, there's a one in a main product one and then parapharyngeal space had a two other lesions, all of benign mixed tumor. Um, very well circumscribed, a very T2 hyper intense mass lesion, which is characteristic for benign mixed tumor. When the, the, the surgeon operates, but not completely resect the entire thing, uh, BMT could recur many years after surgery. And when it, it does happen, it just scattered all over the place. Just like in this case, there's a multiple, multiple well circumscribed T2 hyper intense lesion. Throughout the product one bed, as it comes to the abricular lesion, the parapharyngeal space, and this is the recurrent benign mixed tumor. Product tail is again, it's much lower, so it's almost close to the mandible. You see the tail end of the product one, and it's almost like a product one tissue is the ending, but then you see little mass underneath it. And it's almost like oh, it's just inside a product or outside a product. The easiest way to look for corona or sagittal view. But keep in mind that some of the tail of the product region could project at almost a little bit higher or the mandible, mandible. This is the case of a warping tumor. The warping tumor is uh, much more common in a male and also smoker. And it often uh, happens in a tail of the product. Sometimes you can see heterogeneous enhancing mass, still well circumscribed lesion, not an ill defined lesion. And this is the second most common benign tumor in a product gland. One thing to keep in mind is 20% of warfarin tumor is multicentric, and it's sometimes a bilateral. So when you see bilateral product mass in a male smoker, you know that chances are likely to be warfarin tumor. And uh, sometimes you can see heterogeneity, like some areas are hypo, hypo density, some area looks more hyper dense. Keep in mind the warfarin tumor has a high FDG uptake. So when you have a cancer staging for lung cancer or other cancer, sometimes the protagon pop up like a really high SUV. And oftentimes it is just, just a false positive or benign FDG uptake by the warfarin tumor. As I said, that the, uh, the, the important uh, structure to keep in mind is the facial nerve. So this case it looks like it's just like a DMT. The mass is well circumscribed, homogeneously enhancing. But the key is this lesion is extending very close to the stylomastoid of framing where you expect to have a facial nerve. So look at the coronal images, you see this. Uh, the descending segment of a mastoidal segment of facial nerve has an old bulbated appearance. And this is the case of facial nerve schwannoma. So keep in mind that it looks like a cerebral gland tumor, but within that product, there is a facial nerve. When you see the lesion extending to the uh, uh, cytomastoid of foramen, it could be a facial nerve schwannoma. Another lesion in a product gland are not Sorry, by gland tumor, it's first a bronchial cleft cyst type 2. Um, you can see this well circumscribed, a very T2 bright cystic lesion in the tail of the product. Type 1 bronchial, first bronchial cleft cyst is around the uh, external auditory canal or preavicular lesions, but the type 2 tends to be in the product, parenchyma, particularly for lower end of the product or tail of the product. Another lesion in the first bronchial cleft cyst, the type 2 tail of the product will circumscribe the cystic region. And sometimes you may see sinus tracks at the end of the mandible. This patient is a little bit of a uh, when you be careful. When you see product mass in an infant or a young child, think about hemangioma. This is the most common pathology that you may see in a child with big product gland mass lesion. And this involves with time, so you don't need to be panicked. You just need to watch and wait to see how that goes before uh, really jumping to conclusion to treat this lesion. 
So just summarize the solitary particle and space mass differential diagnosis in terms of benign that we went through, benign mixed tumor, or used to call pleomorphic adenoma, voting tumor, which is bilateral in 15 to 20%, elderly smoking male, smoker male, uh, monomorphic adenoma, facial nerve schwannoma, and also if you see cystic lesion, you think about first bronchial cleftis type 2. And we're going to talk about malignant tumor in this product one, which is including mucoepidermal carcinoma, adenoid carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and also intraparty metastasis. And this is a case of bilateral product gland mass region. There is a multiple bilateral region. It looks like a lymph node looks enlarged, but this is the patient with middle age, but the very large adenoidal tissue in a scalp radiograph. And this is a case of uh, HIV uh, lymphoidal cyst. Another case of a walking tumor, bilateral region in a product gland, multiple C, and this is the case of walking tumor. Uh, Lymphoidal lesion in the HIV, oftentimes this could be the first diagnosis. Uh, patient may not have any specific symptom for HIV. It does not have to be cyst, it could be solid mass lesion. And uh, uh, this is a classic triad of uh, uh, HIV uh, manifestation in the head and neck. And the other findings is the uh, hypertrophic lymphoidal tissue and also cervical lymphadenopathy. So multiple bilateral particle mass differential are warping tumor or people call papillary cystic adenoma or HIV or AIDS, multiple lymphoid serial cysts or lymphoid serial lesions or intraparty uh, lymph node metastasis or lymphoma. And as I showed you earlier, the recurrent pleomorphic adenoma could be bilateral and a multiple. So that would be a full big differential diagnosis. The other category would be diffuse bilateral particle swelling. And this is a case of a sarcoidosis. Notice this diffuse enlargement of particle tissue rather than solid mass inside a product parenchyma. And also, patient also has a lacrimal gland enlargement. Sometimes those findings can be seen in a pulpitis, that infection or inflammation, which could be due to bacterial infection, tuberculosis, a viral infection, or obviously HIV pulpitis is another differential diagnosis. So bilateral diffuse polygon swelling differential, including Sjogren or other autoimmune disease, sarcoidosis, infection such as mumps or HIV, lymphoma, and also diabetic and alcoholic patients tend to have a large cellulite gland, something to keep in mind. Thank you so much, and this is the end of the first part.